welcome to Build. We are coming to you live from London. And today we are joined by three funny men who are currently starring in ITV2's new sitcom, Time Wasters. Please welcome Daniel Lawrence Taylor, Khadif Cohen, and Samson Ko. Yeah. Hello, boys. Are you well? Yeah, 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 good. Good. yeah. Welcome yeah. to Build. Yeah. Welcome to Build. Uh, now, if you've got any questions for the lads, you can tweet us. We are at Build Series LDN on Twitter. Or if you're watching this video on Facebook, you can pop your questions in the comments. So, guys, time wasters. We're a couple of episodes in now. Um, but if anyone hasn't seen it, how would you describe the series in a nutshell to them? Good evening. <laughs> the best I at did this. Not write it. I know, I know, but you do such a good okay. sell. Go. Yeah. Time Wasters is a comedy series about four friends who are from South London. They're in a jazz band, a struggling jazz band. And whilst trying to escape um, a villain, they jump into a lift and a rundown block of flats. And that lift takes them back to the 1920s. And the show's about their escapades in the 1920s, what they get up to, the trouble they get into. <laughs> and they do get up to a lot of trouble, don't they? Yes, a lot they of mischief. Do. In fact, I think we've got a clip of you in trouble right now. Should we take a look? Oh, sick. Look, yeah, man. <laughs> Guys, do we really need to? It's just that if he's already killed her, there's not much we can do. Seriously? We could just wait till he goes away. Nah, there's only one thing we can do. Uh, I don't want to hear this. We have to kill him. Well, this is desperate, but Horace, any ideas? Group suicide. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm looking at a whole cabinet of shotguns. Surely talk to him is our first option. Surely. Now I'm with Lauren. Yeah, we can make it look like a hunting accident. Say we thought he was a deer. A six foot black guy in a puffer. A tall deer. On its hind legs. In a puffer. A puffer deer. <laughs> <laughs> now that's your characters in action there, but how would each of you describe who you play in Time Wasters? Oh, uh, so I play Nick. Um, he is the leader of the band, lead trumpet. Um, he's very anxious. He's very set in his way, very, very stubborn. Uh, I feel like if he kind of let himself go, a bit like Jason, he'd have a bit more fun, but he never does that. Um, yeah, I think that's... The leader of the pack. Yeah, 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 but he's not the greatest of leaders. It's not the coolest. No, 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 no. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm, I play Horace. Um, I think Horace is probably the only person out of the gang to be genuinely excited about being in the 1920s um, <laughs> because he feels like it's a new lease of life. He can do what he wants. He's like a kid in a candy shop, you know? He doesn't really have any worries, you know? And yeah, he's, he's, just, he's just excited. Like yeah. every, every day is a new day to, to, to do something like crazy and 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 a challenge of of just of just excitement. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Sometimes yeah. Sometimes your character doesn't. I don't even think knows that he's in the 1920s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's just going about his business like it's a normal day. Yeah. Steve, how about your character? Jason. Jason's just got one thing on his mind: the ladies. So <laughs> it doesn't even matter that he's in the 1920s. To be fair, could be anywhere. He's the kind of guy that thinks he can pull in like a nunnery. So. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> yeah. True, true. No, it, it seems kind of quite silly and quite lighthearted on the surface of things, but there's actually quite a really strong message in, in this sitcom. Um, and within the first few minutes of the first episode, we're already dealing with sort of themes of race and class. Daniel, you wrote the series. Um, how important was it to you that this issue was kind of tackled through comedy? Um, <clears throat> it wasn't actually my first thought when I was putting together the show I just uh, initially I did want to write a sitcom with uh, an all-black cast because there wasn't many on yeah. TV um, and yeah exactly <laughs> I think so I think when I started chewing gum wasn't even around at that point um, and so I think that was my main thing and then I think as I kind of built the layers and it became about a jazz band that goes back in time to the 1920s I think there was a lot of fun to be had mm. so even though it does deal with quite a lot of a lot of issues and stuff like that. I think it was always to do it with like a funny edge to it. I didn't really necessarily want to send out a message, but I think there's a message underneath. Because it definitely it has that, it strikes that balance of sort of serious, like with its message, but actually it's really, really funny. Yeah, so that's yeah. Kind of a fine line to sort of work like across, I guess. It's underlying bits of shade. I'm just yeah. going <laughs> to sprinkle some shade on you yeah. in amongst the comedy. We're going to let you know. They are bad, <laughs> you know? Because yeah. I know the 1920s was, let's say, a problematic time in our history. Is that kind of why it acts as quite a nice backdrop to the, to the series? Yeah, I mean, I think 
Britain. And, I mean, there's always a terrible time in Britain. Like, I think it's <laughs> now. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, it's it's weirdly enough. There's elements of the 1920s that are better then than it is now. Like. Um, you know, back then in the 20s, at least you could kind of claim ignorance, whereas now I think it's like blatant racism <laughs> that happens right now. Um, but yeah, I think, um, sorry, I, I've forgotten what your question was. I just, <laughs> I just wanted to call everyone racist. Um, the 1920s, why, why was it the 1920s? Yeah, I think, um, yeah, the, there was just so much fun to be had. I think uh, it's funny the fact that we kind of play with the idea that there's so few black people on the streets. Uh, the fact that black people back then would have been loved and adored and sometimes loved and adored a little bit too much to the point of like negrophilia. So I think that was always quite fun to be had. I mean, the way that they view Jason's character, um, <laughs> like, he, yeah, an exotic Adonis. Um, <laughs> and he's kind of like marveled to the point of like actually paraded around and stuff like that. I think that it was quite funny to kind of play with that. Um, but also as well, um, I think... Um, yeah, I think uh, just just the idea of like the time, because women yeah. weren't allowed to vote and, yeah. and stuff like that, and being able to kind of, you know, especially with Adelayo as a black female in the 1920s. Awoke. It's a woke black female in the <laughs> 1920s. Um, Adelayo plays Lauren. She couldn't be here today, but um, that that in its own is a lot, you know. Yeah. And and you saw it in in one of the episodes. Her kind of, you know, fight to become the queen. <laughs> and she runs rings around all of you in this, yeah, by the dude, way. Dude, <laughs> she's a powerhouse. Yeah, she's <laughs> now, I read somewhere that you actually wanted to call it something else before it was time wow. racing. Is this right? It's, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I wanted to call it Black to the Future. Um, <laughs> Which is a genius name. Yeah, that's what I thought as well. But um, I think it was either Universal or Fox, they said no. Um, which I was gutted about. Is that all around like copyright and all of that? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I don't think is fair because I remember seeing shows like uh, Total Recall. There was a sitcom called Scrotal Recall. Exactly. And I was like, how comes they can have that? But I can't have Black to the Future, so I was a little bit annoyed about that. Yeah, because I'm black. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they knew, they, they knew when they we knew signed up for the show, it was called Black to the Future. So yeah, a bit annoying. Like a little while. <laughs> I was like, oh, they were like, nope, you're not doing that to us. No way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now the show also kind of like in its premise it offers comment on the sort of the state of diversity in period dramas and sort of time travel shows um why do you think that those genres kind of often lag behind other sort of types of shows on telly oh that's a i don't know to be honest i mean I, i've never really yeah i mean that i suppose that's probably why i can't answer it because it's, it's baffling because Black people can be in period dramas and they can be in sci-fi shows. I mean, there's not, I suppose that's why I can't really give you an answer. It's just they've been excluded, but for no real reason. Mm. So I think it was quite a joy to be able to actually put together a show like this and have ITV behind it and be able to do both a period drama and sci-fi. And jazz. <laughs> jazz, jazz, jazz. Jazz! Because yeah. the country is obsessed with period genres. You know, there's Downton Abbey, there's things like Gunpowder, there's things yeah. like Victoria. It's like, yeah. we are, as a nation, obsessed with period dramas. Do you think that that could be why we're, it, we're sort of progress is being held back, just because of the nature of how much people love it? I, feel, I, I don't know. I, I feel like people are starting to realise that, you know, black people did exist in them times. And you know, it's not. It wouldn't be a bad idea to have their kind of view and their take on that time for them, you know. And I think Daniel's done a great thing in kind of, you know, making the show a comedy. So it's like, you know, we're having fun in that time where mm. all of this sort of stuff is happening, you know, which is which I think is pretty cool. I mean, the Doctor Who announcement yesterday as well, that was a great sort of victory for diversity as well. We've got three new assistants, yeah. uh, two of which are BAME actors, which yeah. is a great step forward, especially because we've not really seen that in the show before. So I guess that's a little victory for you guys, I'd like to think. Yeah. Pioneering. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're coming. <laughs> uh, now, getting back to the show, um, when you sort of pitched it, did you pitch it to ITV2 or did they come to you guys? How, how was that process? Um, so I, I was working on another show with the production company and I, I wrote this thing and it was, 
as you can see from the show, like normally you'd put together like a pitch where you could just kind of say, oh, this is kind of what I'm trying to do and these are kind of the characters and stuff. But because it's such a weird idea, because it's an all black, I mean, that in itself to get on TV, an all black anything is a trouble. <laughs> uh, but the fact that it was an all black jazz band that goes back in time to the 1920s, I realized that that was too difficult to try and get across in the treatment. So I thought I'd just pen out a script and went, you know what? Here's 30 pages, it's a little bit ropey, but you kind of get the idea yeah. of where I'm kind of coming from. And then uh, the producer I was working with, I gave it to him, he really liked it. And so we just kind of developed it from there, made it into a stronger script, sent it to ITV, they really loved it. And then said to us, we can have a read through, did a read through, then we did a pilot, and then they commissioned a series, and yeah, and now we're here. It's a long process, right, I guess. We, yeah, we've been a part of this since 2015. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yes, Daniel. Yeah, no, well, I was here from 2014. <laughs> <laughs> did he make you guys audition for it? Or yes. Yes. It, yeah, yeah, we, yeah, oh fully audition for yeah, it. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. yeah, my agent sent me the script, and I was like, okay, if I'm not in this show, I'm going to kill someone. <laughs> the script is fire. Yeah. Um, and I think I was the first person you guys met. Yeah, so Kadeep was, yeah. I walked into the room, I was like, you're going to give me this job. <laughs> so you guys did. didn't know, all know each other before no, that? No, I, I we knew didn't. Daniel's work, because he used to like, see him in the audition room. <laughs> but apart <Hi>. from that... <laughs> <laughs> no, I knew, I, knew of, I knew of Kadeep and Daniel. Um, <laughs> and um, yeah, um, it was weird, because once... Once we'd found out we'd gotten the job, we, we came in for a reading, um, and it was it was Adelio's chemistry read oh, yeah. um, because they hadn't cast Lauren yet. So when we came in and we um, we were chilling, me and Khadif were chilling with Adelio, and then we walked out and we were like, um, if she doesn't get the job. I'm walking. We're going. <laughs> we're, like, we're not doing it because like it was so, um, and you could tell like we just gelled straight away. It was like it was meant to be, you know, yeah. like and. Um, yeah, everyone just clicked really, yeah. really Easy. quickly. Like, it was actually yeah, it was, crazy. It was really lovely, like, after the read-through. Um, everyone just assumed that I cast my friends. Like, I was like, oh, I've done this show, let me cast my friends, and I didn't know any of them. And so I think that was so lovely. Like, we just yeah. clicked really, really yeah. well. So at the point where you were cast, then, had you written the whole series, or was it kind of like a, then a bit more of a collaborative process where you could write around these guys and their personalities it's a bit more? It's funny. <laughs> <boy. laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> I'm joking. I wrote it. <laughs> no, joking. No, no, no. We did. There was like a lot of improvising and stuff like that. But um, no, so I wrote the I wrote the pilot and that's what we kind of used. So we had one script, the first episode. And then that kind of developed over the time. So from when I started it to the read through to the pilot itself. And then once we got the commission, uh, we kept all the original cast. Um, and yeah. So you kind of knew who you were writing for. Which is yeah, cool. yeah. Which really was helped. crazy. Like when you just want to, you know, when you just read, like you read a script and you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to be vex if I'm not in this show. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It was one of those ones. And, and it, was, it, was, it was just exciting because I remember when, we, when, I, when I came in um, with the singing, it was like because Daniel didn't know I could sing and we just had a chat about it. And then in the reading, Daniel had written, uh, what, what was it? Was it Gold Digger? Yeah was Gold Digger by um, Ray Charles. And um, it was in like big writing. So I was like, oh, that means I have to sing it. <laughs> okay, so we sang it and then we just carried on. It was like, it, it worked and carried on putting it in more episodes, which was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's he like to work for as a boss? Is it intimidating Jesus. having a writer on set with you and a lot acting alongside Diva. you? <sighs> you know what, he's, he's, it's quite chill. He's not too precious. Um, He's very, <laughs> he's very generous. He's very generous, yeah, and he's and and you know he did say and again especially and George Kane, our director, they were like you know, they gave us freedom. Like if we felt something would work in a the scene, they would they would you know they'll do it this way, and then they go okay cool, let's do it the way you think you know. And any ideas you have, they were very generous in letting us really yeah, nice. and very collaborative in letting us do what we what we kind of felt you know in the moment, yeah. which was which was really. It's really good to have a director and writer. To our that. detriment, though, because there, <laughs> there was a lot of corpsing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, much. we, oh, man. Yeah, are we going to get a YouTube gag reel at the end of this? Oh. At the end of the series? Uh, it is <laughs> long. It's long. Yeah. <laughs> it is long. You don't have that time of day, honestly. It just went so on and on and on. We did, we did a whole scene in Jamaican accents. 
<laughs> I really hope that comes out. <laughs> I, no, I don't. No. I I mean, it was amazing. I don't think it was the most PC either. Like, <laughs> yeah. True. Yeah, now, true. obviously, you're all musicians on the show. Samson, you said that you sing. And we th that, I'm assuming that is your voice on the show, right? Yeah, yeah, it is my voice. Yeah. How about you guys? What's the sort of the... Are you musical? Are you... Really yeah. playing those instruments, yeah. or uh, why are you lying? Eve can sing. <laughs> I, can, I, si I sing. Eve can sing. Yeah. Like, someone didn't put that in the script. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I'm a trumpet. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. I'm a sax. Yeah, see, <laughs> yeah. Bruv, I'm just not a musician. No, we we um, we just learned via YouTube how to look like we can play. Right. Okay. That was basically it. <laughs> and Samson, Samson then had to play the trombone just before the director said action. Look, like, he look, had his bone in his hand. Is annoying. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's got like three pieces, and every time. I tried, we was about to shoot. It just fall apart. <laughs> and one time I kicked it out of frustration and then we fixed it and it was just like, oh God, I need to learn how to play this. How do you play this? And I went on YouTube just before we said action and found a way, yeah. <laughs> method, method, method. <laughs> What's it like actually having to sing in front of like all these guys, a huge like crew? Like, is that intimidating for you? No, he no, loves fine. it, yeah, <laughs> he loves the attention. <laughs> nah. <laughs> it was fun, I mean, because it's like, you get to, I remember we went to do the recordings and, you know, the uh, sound guy was just like, look, just have some fun with it and kind of, you know, if you if there's any song that you feel like is better for, you know, and it was just, it was just a, an exciting experience to be able to sing in a, in a show. It's just one of those things you tick off. Mm. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, obviously, it's also a period piece. It's set in the 20s, as we've said before. How did you enjoy that aspect of it? Did you really enjoy the dressing up and the sort of the getting into the 20s spirit of it Costumes all? Costumes were banging. <laughs> like, if I could dress like that all day, every day, I would. Easy. Was there pieces coming home with you at the end of each shoot? Nah, unfortunately. We not. wish. No, we they tried. were quite expensive, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it maybe, was, yeah. maybe next series you can just uh, have it in your contracts that you get to keep a few bits at the end of it. Kadeef, <laughs> Kadeef yeah. always had the best costumes. I remember it like, that would come out. Yeah. I mean, there you are. Look at how good I look. There, gents. Look at that. <laughs> I remember his suit. Look at his compared to ours. It's like to be fair, that I, I, made really I would good wear that suit. With the, with the I would wear this we all would. That's what we were arguing about because Khadib got to wear all those suits. I look like um, I'm going clay shooting. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh, Claire Finley, who did the costume, like she was amazing. amazing. Like, yeah, I mean, the stuff, it's amazing. Like when you write stuff, you, like I never think about like what it's gonna actually be. And she kind of just took it beyond. I mean, we had stuff like the Egyptian theme party. I mean, the stuff that she yeah, did with that and all the guys that designed the set and stuff. It was just incredible, and mm. like, like, let's not pretend like uh, the British comedy budgets are not that big. <laughs> uh, but they did amazing jobs, and so one of the things that I love hearing from people is how much they love like the costume and the sets and just the general feel. I of think it. it's that whole kind of like that magical era, isn't it? It's like this when you watch Strictly, you're kind of taken back to a different time. I think it's kind of the same vibe when you watch the Yeah, year. I mean, I remember watching uh, Bright Young Things and like that was my kind of like main visual thing and that's what I wanted to kind of replicate but I thought that wouldn't be possible because of the budget but I think what they did, yeah, they've done amazingly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you guys film it all? Where is it kind of all based and set? Liverpool. In, uh, Liverpool. Yeah. Hey, why? It's on location. Oh, I Liverpool. love that place. Apparently Liverpool doubles for everything. Did you even shoot the South London? Like bits All that's in, in Liverpool, well. yeah. Oh, wow. That was not even in a block of flats. That was in like a block of offices. A blo yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah. They made it look like a hallway. And then yeah. they built a lift. They specially built a lift yeah. just for that scene. Yeah. What was the li what was it about the lift that was the portal for you? Like, why, why, why the lift? Because, because it's shitty. Like you want, <laughs> you just want something <laughs> shitty. And I was like, what's a shitty way to go back in time? A shitty lift. <laughs> it's the perfect place, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and I'm like, we've mentioned the corpse saying and the fun that you've had on set, but what, what were typical days like on set for you? How much fun did you guys have doing this? Was a lot of work actually done on set? Yeah, the, we, we did do work, but we, we, we played a lot of like, pranks I played a lot of like, pranks. He, tr he trashed people. our trailers. Yeah, <laughs> I, went, I, I went to, I changed Daniel's uh, trailer door and I wrote um, Daniel Taylor plus supporting artist toilets. <laughs> and then I tried to get like a bunch of supporting artists to line in front of his door well before he gets there, but he got there too quick, so I ran away. Such an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so not much work did get done. Nah. <laughs> nah. 
Until George said, look, nip it in the bud. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he was losing his patience after a while because <laughs> we were pissing about too I much. think that helped, you know, the chemistry between us and, you know, to be able to just bounce off each other's characters as well as, yeah. you know, yeah. just enjoy ourselves in Liverpool, which is... Good, like, man. Amazing. We were staying in the same apartments as well, which was... Yeah. Like, we, we hung out after work. Continue the party after you finish work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool. uh, what's the reaction been like so far? Because we're three apps in now, right? I think we're three four. more to go. Four. Four. Yeah. Four. Yeah. Two more yeah. to go. Yeah. 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 Um, it's been amazing. Yeah, we were just saying, like, the Twitter response has been insane. Mm. Like, people have been really behind it, which we're so chuffed about. Because comedy is always that thing, you know, it's not for everyone, or people might, mm. you know, feel a certain way about it, but everyone's been absolutely brilliant about yeah, it. Yeah, and also because of the subject matter as well, you didn't really know how people would respond to it as well. Yeah. I mean, we found a few trolls. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I see, I'm going to find them. <laughs> I'm so going to find them. <laughs> Apart from those... <laughs> Apart from the trolls that's going to be killed by Khadif, like the reception had been like amazing. Like it's, and yeah, people have been loving the themes. They've really been loving the characters as well, the stories. So yeah, um, so hopefully we'll get to do it again. Yeah, I can see there's lots of love coming in on Twitter. There's a few people that are already tweeting. Gemma is short, DJ Blighty, at Sam 17 all tweeting how much they love the show. So yeah, there is a wow. lot of love out there for you guys. That's amazing. Um, in those two apps we've got left, I know you don't want to spoil it for us, but can you tease... What's going to happen? Are they going to get back to South East London in 2017? Oh, uh, I feel like they're going to try. I think they're definitely going to try to yeah. get back. What can we say? I mean, uh, we can say that the villain comes back. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Comes yeah, back. yeah. The next episode. Um, Daniel said, okay. You shouldn't have told him that. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, though. He, he comes back. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, KG. KG, the comedian, he plays Curtis. And... Um, you think that um, he's gone forever, but he's going to make a, an appearance. Mm. Make, make a return. Yeah. Uh, series two, are we looking likely? Would you like to do it? Oh, yeah. Yes. Pl absolutely. Which camera do I look into to convince people? <laughs> this one. Where are they? This one. Please, for the love of God. No, I think, I think, um, no, I think people have been, um, like, it's got such a good response. The Twitter feedback, g general public, um, the numbers have been amazing as well. And so there's no reason why it shouldn't come back and uh, and i mean i've already <laughs> i've already started like having ideas of like where they could possibly go for series two so. are you guys privy to that or is it all i mean <laughs> no, of course i'd love to do it again man i mean it's just it's like you can go anywhere can't you you know you've got a shitty lift but you can just it can take you to anywhere cuba south africa <laughs> <laughs> jamaica yeah, those Regular, comedy yeah. budgets might <laughs> be a bit of an issue hot. there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but no, I mean, just to be a part of it is, just, is, 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 a, is, an, is a blessing in its own. So, yeah, I'd love to do it again, yeah. Now, before we go to these guys in the audience, because I know that they've all got loads of questions that they want to ask, I want to chat to you a bit about your comedy heroes growing up. Um, what sitcoms, what comedies did you love watching when you were sort of, before you wanted to get into comedy yourselves? For me, it was... Desmond's. I used to love Desmond's, which is also set in Peckham. Um, I adored that. And Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Like, I think everyone loved Fresh Classic. Prince of Bel-Air. Yeah, see, I see people <laughs> nodding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah I'm you get Samson to sing the, sing the opening th song for us. Okay, do you know what's funny? What if I didn't know it? <laughs> that would be awkward because I'm black and I don't know the Fresh Prince of Bel Air theme song. <laughs> in West Philadelphia, born and raised, in a playground as well, I swear most of my days. days. Come on, white people. Good night, mate. <laughs> it's all right, don't worry about it. We'll get you there, we'll get you there. I think that deserves a round of applause. That was a good effort. Gracias. <laughs> Um, you've all started in some dream shows like Chewing Go and Black Mirror. Like you guys have been in a big old mixture of stuff. But is there like something left that you'd really love to to star in? The remake of Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to be in the remake of The Warriors. What's that? Why? What's that? The Warriors. Do you not know The Warriors? No. Tink -tink -tink. Warriors <laughs> come out and play. It sounds dead creepy. It's from an amazing. That. Yeah. It's an amazing. It's about it's about the New York gangs um, in the is it the seventies or something, and you know they they basically get stuck. They get they basically go to a different part of New York and have to make their way back to 
where they're from and there's a load of gangs in between. It's an amazing film. Warriors is a classic, man. You need to see that, clearly. Oh, dude. There you go. There's yes. your pitch. That just there. You've just sold it. Hi. <laughs> Samson <and> Kao. Profile? <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Let's go over to these guys on the floor. Uh, who has got the first question? Hello. Hi, guys. If you had to choose any hero in any moment of history, who would it be and why? Oh, that's Ooh. a good one. Heroes. I would probably just, you know, I'd probably say Muhammad Ali um, simply because of the, the, he stood up in a time where you shouldn't stand up. Mm. And, you know, he kind of defeated all kind of uh, uh, blocks in front of him and just to be who he is. You know, yeah. like everyone knows about Muhammad and, and, and what he stood for. And I think he's just a legend. And, um, yeah, he's he's probably one of my heroes, absolutely. Probably Rosa Parks, because, again, for what she stood for or sat for, um, something so that seems so small created a movement and is a part of our history now. So, to sit in. Khadif said he would he would he would if he could go back to that time he would sit on the bus with her next to her. <laughs> She's so sick. Like, What's going on, Rose? Yeah, he'd be like, what up, Rosa? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mandela. But for all those reasons, it's a shame that our periods of history, they've all had to keep doing it again and again yeah. and again and again. Uh, but yeah, Mandela. Uh, who's got the next question? Hello. Hi. Uh, what was the funniest thing that happened when the cameras weren't rolling? For me, it was Adelaide's Jamaican accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that is gold. Bad. Adelaide, who plays Lauren, she was struggling with a uh, Jamaican accent. So we kind of, we were like teaching her to kind of, with the, the languages. I'm not Jamaican, by the way, but but when she did it, it was the funniest thing ever. I hope you can see I'm going to leak it. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it was one, it was, I think the episode that we showed this week, um, there was a scene that the three of us were in where if you look closely, we couldn't look at each other oh, in the yes. scene. Yeah. We had to, like, I think it was, the, it was. Yeah, the director ended up having to cut around it because I couldn't do the scene anymore. I, I was laughing too much. I just kept on laughing. I was like, we're not, we're not getting it. Whatever you've got of this scene, take that. You'll have to use it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's it. And so, yeah, it's a weird cut where like, I'm like cut out of shot because <laughs> I'm too busy in the corner laughing. <laughs> yeah, that would be mine as well, definitely. <laughs> yeah, someone needs to leak that too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> who has got the next question? Hi. Hi, um, if you could travel back to a moment in your past, what would it be and why? Hmm. Oh, this is a tricky question. Yeah, Good question. there's so many options. Yeah. I was um, gonna say, I was gonna say, getting suspended from school, but then I wouldn't have become an actor. Uh, so now let me think of another one. <laughs> That'd be like a proper Gwyneth Paltrow sliding doors. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you mean like time or in in personal life, or do you mean? Oh. Oh, that's so tricky. And we're thinking about it like we can do it. Like, like we're going to actually go do it. Um, uh, I don't know. Yeah. Nickelodeon days. <laughs> Just watch TV. And they had Hey Arnold and, 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 and Cousin oh, Skeeter yeah. and all of that. The glory like, days, I think you'll yeah, find that called. Yeah, the glory days of cartoon. <laughs> yeah, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah. That's terrible. You go yeah, back no. in time to watch <laughs> cartoons. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you can get them on DVD. <laughs> um, I probably would have gone back to being like 10 and not stopped piano lessons because it might have come in handy in this job, you know? Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, same with me and the Something trumpet, like which was just about three years ago. I came up with the idea when I was learning how to play the trumpet, got commissioned, then ran out of time to play the trumpet in order to <laughs> write a show about a guy who plays... Musical instrument, yeah. <laughs> handy, very handy. Exactly. Yeah. Sadly, that's all we've got time for, but Time Wasters, the next two episodes, when can we catch them? Catch them Monday at 10 on ITV2. ITV two. Two. Make sure you tune in. Uh, in the meantime, please join me one last time in giving up for Daniel, Kadif, and Samson. Hey, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank you. guys. Thank you.